there's really no pressure of me opening up this session and then you know, setting the standard for everyone to um, see like how to open the, the, the conference. But um, well, um, first of all, thank you for the UXC um, um, society for um, organizing this, this, this very big event and then, well, I mean, inviting me for the session. And then um, the starting point that uh, Kuldeep was um, sharing about you know, like what, what are the things that, that, that we're gonna talk today is the future of UX. It sounds really big and I really had no idea um, what you know, like sort of the future that we're looking at. But what I do know is that um, I'm, I've, I'm a product research lead in Gojek and I've been there for two and a half years now. Um, we changed a lot in the past three, four years and I've been uh, one of the um, part of the transformation as well. And perhaps you know, like what I can do for you is that not showing you the future of the UX, really had no idea about that, but as a researcher, as a product researcher, you know, I'm going to share you what's learnings, uh, what learnings and what um, sort of like things that we learned about when we're trying to evolve um, continuously in terms of um, having a team and then also building the uh, capacity that we're trying to push forward and then per perhaps expanding also as well in terms of like our impacts. Um, a little bit of context about oh, this. This is um, Gojek's new logo. Hopefully you guys know this. Hopefully you guys are aware that um, Gojek is currently in, um, up and running in Singapore right now. Um, we've came with um, this new logo just, I think, four, five, six months ago, and then we rebranded everything um, to occupy the story behind our development as a, as a product. So we started off, I think, six years ago, um, around 2015, 2014, 2015, as an app that exclusively does um, mobility service. So we had uh, this ride and car service, um, ride hailing service for uh, motorcycle and, um, and cars. And the whole idea is that we're building it on, on an on-demand app um, so that people can, um, you know, hail something and then um, have the, 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 the driver, the driver partners to pick them up on the, on the needed time. Um, there was a basic premise of Gojek for around six months before we expanded in the course of um, another years to having more than 20 plus business units and the whole idea is that we expanded not only working on mobility service but then we basically do every um, on-demand um, service that's imaginable to be done in Indonesia um, within one app and so we had, let's say, on the left part is the um, mobility and log logistic service. We also had entertainment, we had also pay a digital payment service, and then we also had a food delivery, shopping delivery, and even a massage service that's coming to your house without you having to book um, outside of your phone. And so that's the story. And then I guess, um, you know, what the transformation has been looking like inside the company is that everyone's been sort of like frantic about maintaining the the sort of like comprehension of you know how big is our product now or how big is our impact now within the within the market and we've been expanding this you know like not only Indonesia but also in Singapore um, Vietnam Thailand as well and you know how do we actually make sense all this big transformation that's only hap that's happening only in four years time and so um, I guess there are three challenges internally within the organization and then it's definitely felt by the UX research team as, as well as I'm gonna um, tell you after this but the whole idea is that as a big giant business in, in, in Indonesia as, a, as, a, as a one of the unicorn as, as um, you know, like we said before is that we do have the, the, the biggest the, the most primary need of um, of the business to scale up in itself and then we also need to leapfrog the competition as it's already been said today and so the the sort of like starting point for this is that we do need to think everything in terms of like how efficient it is how impactful it is and then do we actually um, sort of like look forward to the North Start metrics to uh, move and then see if we can optimize everything again in the next iteration. And so there's, there's, that's always the mindset that we're pushing in Gojek. And then the second challenge, especially for UX researchers, is that we do have a very rigid and rigorous sort of like um, approach towards science in terms of like we do understand um, what are the data infrastructures need to be built for us to understand the users and then also we need um, um, and you know, we, we've done a lot of like experiments that 
we know what's been happening with, with our users and then how to actually treat them to make sure that we're optimizing um, uh, sort of like the interaction and whatnot. Um, the last one as well is that it adds down to we're even having speed as one of the um, values that we hold close to within the company. And so these are the sort of like three um, starting points of what Gojek looks like and the three um, areas that um, me as a researcher needs to um, sort of like come terms with because um, you know, like it's how everyone, everyone does it work in Gojek. And so um, the starting point for me was that in 2017. And so I joined as a, as a UX researcher and then what we were signing up for this um, 10 members of the, uh, of the UX research team was that we're doing um, all research related thing for design and um, product um, development related um, issues. And um, we were previously centralized in terms of like we um, sit together and then we work um, on different products depends on um, our bandwidth and capacity. We haven't really embedded ourselves within different products or different um, uh, business verticals. And you know, uh, we seemed we felt it, it felt pretty close because you know, like we, we we were on this thing together, but then we realized that with all these previous challenges, um, it's actually hard for us to scale ourselves. And then there are some you know downsides for us to not be able to cope and contextualize ourselves within the the changes that's been um, said previously. Um, I think the three challenges that we had, um, just to sum up, is that. Um, we don't have a good distribution of skills among products. Let's say if we were focusing ourselves more, much more on doing research for, let's say, mobility, then it's, gonna, it's not going to be the same for us doing research for payments and then also for food delivery. Um, it needs more expertise. It needs more also um, embedded knowledge about what's been happening with an industry, what's been happening with the um, sort of like uh, a competitive realm of the specific products and whatnot. And we haven't really built deep knowledge within the products itself. And so um, it's hard for us to actually scale our impact within the um, specific uh, products because, well, we're trying to tackle everything together. And then um, second one is for researchers, the conventional ones, the conventional starting points, at least in like what's been happening in Gojek, was that we were um, very much heavy on qualitative um, uh, sort of like tools as a way for us to achieve our goals and I wouldn't say it's a, it's a it's the wrong thing I wouldn't say that um, you know like we cannot just do um, qualitative but then um, what's been happening to us is that it got beaten up by um, how data is actually being you know like stronger and stronger and then we cannot um, integrate what been what, what we've been knowing from our researchers um, with the data that we already had as a as a fact or as an evidence within um, within the company, and so we shied away. We shied away in terms of not thinking that we could be more impactful, and well, the idea that we cannot always be conclusive about our, our research results made us even further from the from the product team or the things that we're serving for. Um, the third one is that we are on a battle when we're talking about speed and we're talking about you know, like tight business goals. Um, we're always facing the battle of, you know, do we know which ones to take? We, do you know which are which are our battles, or um, you know, like of what kind of questions do we need to answer right now, and what kind of questions that we need to answer for the longer um, sustain um, sustainment of the business? And so those kind, those are the the sort of like wars that happening within the team as well. You know how to expand ourselves so that we, so that we can answer all these challenges, and then you know like what sort of Maturity. What sort of mindsets do we need to own um, for us to actually be able to um, scale up as needed? And so, oh, these are sort of like the learnings that I wanted to um, share about what's been happening in the past um, th uh, two, three years um, in my involvement in the research team. And so, um, we sort of like changed branding as well because we're not necessarily saying ourselves as a UX research team, but then we're, we're, we're integrating with a, with a bigger research team as a um, research and insights team. Um, and then we, from 10, expanded to um, 62 members on uh, the research team. 
um, we hold more expertise and then, well, hopefully, as we can show you later, uh, as I can show you later, um, we, we build more impact, we build more sort of like connection with the, with the product team to contextualize ourselves in um, our practice. Um, yeah, these are basically how we kind of look like. Um, the idea is that we're not starting um, in terms of sort of like what methods do we bring into our research. No, we come up with expertise and then we combine it inside. So we have you know, like different researchers, different shapes of researchers, different creatures of researchers that um, within, uh, that, 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 that uh, goes within our product. We have qualitative researchers, we have uh, mixed method ones that do, does surveys and data anal analysis. We have also survey scientists. We have design researchers that look for more into um, sort of like um, service design and strategy. Um, we have market intelligence market researchers and whatnot. And the whole idea is that um, we're trying to strengthen ourselves to have a value proposition that's strong enough for the, for, for, for the department to be contextual within the company and then see if we can actually mature um, ourselves while we know, you know, like, while, while we measure what are the impacts that we are doing for the company as well. Um, definitely 60 people, um, if you can see, is not, is not you know, like, is not, it's, it's a lot, right? And then the story in itself is that um, we're not only sp um, expanding or our, our, our maturing in scale in numbers, but also what, we're what, what I'm trying to also share to you guys is that how do we actually define our voice? How do we actually mature in terms of like individual and well-being and whatnot? And so these are the three principles that I want to share to you guys um, on how to um, you know, what learnings do I have on, on, on monitoring, on expanding from, um, you know, like 10 people team in 2017 to um, 52 or 55 or more even um, researchers within um, this year. And so first one is um, um, starting by defining what the business values for your team within the company. Um, second one is you might want to build bridges with, the, with, with other functions, with other teams that are um, neighbor into yours, and then the, the third one is that if you have a, a, a roadmap of how your transformation is going to look like, plan it, uh, make milestones out of it, and then communicate it to everyone that's needed to be communicated. Um, how does it look like? So the first one is that this is the challenge, right? Um, for uh, UX researchers to uh, be able to be impactful in the company, to be able to contribute, and then you know, like do things that we want to do in the um, um, in a in a sort of like business and design setting we um, have different sort of like um, arrangements. It, ne it never, there's, there, there never is a single um, uh, silver bullet to answer everything for us. And then the idea is that it depends on, you know, like how, you, how, the, how the company is, 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 is moving as, a, as, a, as one. How's the um, sort of like connection between teams and between products? What are the silos that need to be broken and whatnot? And so what I wanted to say is that there's no real answer to, as to you know, like, uh, the question of what does um, a UX researcher need to um, contribute and focus on. And so these are the challenges that's happening in my, in my, uh, in my company as well. Um, the question is um, this one. Um, we uh, refrain ourselves from working and you know, like doing research and ask on ourselves, um, you know, like what are the um, impact that we want to make? What are the business values that we want to make? And then does it align with the, with the company's uh, views? Um, about what we should do and then that's it sustainable and so these are the questions that we'd re we want to answer ourselves first and it might be something that is more um, um, up your street as well to answer what kind of uh, business values that we want to own and then that's it sustainable and so um, yeah as a context um, to sort of like show our way of thinking about you know, how do we define our business values is that we look at um, the development of product in the last two years, um, we had two major redesigns. The, we have um, you know, like both branding and both um, the, the whole UX of the, of the application. And then um, you know, like starting from only two products into 20 plus, 20 plus products, we um, on average have one uh, point to new product lines a year. And so the development's been very, very, very fast. And then we've been trying to do a lot of 
things in uh, this four years time. And then what's been happening as well is that you know, like we build things um, based on hunches. We build things based on the availability that um, we have as a as a as a company. But then it doesn't always translate to the right thing, right? And so what we sort of like tell ourselves with the research is that we wanted the company to be able to save time and then focus on the right thing because we have access to the right insights. We have access to information from the external ones from um, and, and integrating it with, with data as well so that we can tell the people in the, in the, in the company, tell our stakeholders, tell uh, the, the product team as well, you know, these are the direction that we think everyone should make, and then these are the rationale as to why it's the, it's the answer. And um, I guess from the, from the context that we have very, very tight competition, saving time is actually saving the company's money, and um, it's definitely something that we want to do first and foremost because otherwise we're not doing the right thing and then you like we might be um, beaten up in the in the in the in the, in the race by, by our competitors and so these are the, the thing that we're trying to communicate within our company on what values does um, a, a UX researcher um, has in the company and so um, these are the two building blocks that we're trying to um, implement within the within the researchers as well is that we want to focus both on evidence um, and empathy of course empathy is something that's at least for me personally overused in terms of like what do we need to use with empathy what do we need to communicate and what does it actually mean to for for a, for a person to be you know, like empathetic right and so um, what I'm trying to believe is that empathy is something that you know like can't be overlooked but it needs to be defined clearly what we really think about you know, like what empathy means is that it's a capacity is an emotional capacity that you have um, as an individual as a team as a company for you to understand what is the things that might be um, um, might be done by by our users if we treat them by X and then you know, like what are the outcomes that might um, happen in terms of like behavior of our Y users um, if we, you know, like move um, our feature development from um, Y to Z, let's say, and so those kind of things, um, you know, like we we're building hunches about what's happening out to our users, and the thing about hunches is that it needs to be trained over time, right? Because you know you have to um, know, you know, like what are the trials and errors that you've done in the past, and then um, you need to know if your sort of like calculations are getting more you know like better and better and so that's the first one and then the second one is evidence in terms of like if we do have a, a way to inspire people through sort of like um empathic um, empathetic inspirations you know what are the evidence we can bring it to the table for us to be able to make sure that they understand these are the the the, the things that been happening to our users and then um they can act on it basically um one of the example is i think this is pretty recent and so um one of the CEOs um, that we that we have in the, in in our company is well seen here is you know, like using uh, what's the name Angkot Angkot is a, is a is a local sort of like conventional um, taxi minibus for people to 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 commute and it's not something that is you know like very much tacky or very good like it's very very much conventional and it's definitely not comfortable but the whole idea of you know, like us as a researcher taking um, our CEO for a ride in Angkot um, in a heated way, definitely there's no AC here. Um, is that you know we want we want um, our CEO to learn about you know how people actually commute within the within the different parts of the city. What are the hassles and what are the gaps that we can um, fill in as a as a mobility service to win um, you know like the commuting trips and then you know like win the shares of um, our our. Um, users mind in terms of like using research using Gojek for for commuting so this is one and then the follow-up is you know like coming up with the evidence um, I see that we've got a lot of memes but um, the whole idea is that I don't know if it's happening a lot to you guys but um, in Gojek when speed is something that's um, campaigns all over again we've experienced a lot of things that were you know like um, upon two minutes before decision is made uh, uh, a product manager or let's say like, the center come, uh, came upon, uh, came onto us and then asked, you know, like, do you have something about this? Because we are so keen to make decisions very much now, and we also we definitely don't have that, right? And then the second one is as well, there are some brewing of a blame game in terms of like 
why something is bad and then you know like um, research can be a very much a good part in that because we um, provide information for people to make decisions and so these things are happening not necessarily all the drama happening a lot but you know, like um, there are instances where we can actually be become um, part of this fiasco and then you know we do need to optimize things right and then what we did as a as a researcher is that we're not only doing projects in terms of like things that are asked by our stakeholders or things that are initiated by us, but then we take the diligence of us to um, document everything and then find out learnings that's um, happening within um, a specific you know, product or business unit and whatnot to make sure that we can come up with a repository. So it looks like this, right? Um, as beautiful as it is, it's something that is very, very much functional in terms of like us sharing to the whole company, even not even our direct stakeholders, because everyone should did it and should be public. Is that our research repository in terms of like what do we know about X things? We can come up with a director, we can come up with a um, tags on what kind of research it is, or we can come up with um, filtering through product verticals or methodologies and whatnot. And the idea is that we have a one-stop solution for everyone who has came and um, asked us about, you know, like, hey, do you know something about this? Because, because we don't have much time, but we want to answer, really, really answer um, this X thing because they want to make a decision. And so this all, this, th that's already the ideas that were behind us coming up with this um, research repository. It's public and you know, like accessible by everyone within the company. Um, and you, know, like, you can find out um, anything within it as long as we've done it. So. Um, the whole idea is that for us to make every insights accessible and then it doesn't necessarily translate to us doing the same thing all over again because we got um, knowledge missed, a loss in translation, um, that is. And the second one is um, building bridges is something that we're very, very much keen of because internally as a, as a, as a, as a department, we do have uh, people from different backgrounds, right? We do have data analysts, we have, do have survey scientists, qualitative researcher, design researcher, UX researchers, and then what we wanted to do is that we th um, think a lot about, you know, like, what are the, actually the, the decision-making situations that are um, present within our company? What sort of, like, things that um, our stakeholders need to answer on a, on a um, daily or I don't know, like regular basis, and then how do we actually infuse ourselves within it? And so, if we think about it, right, we have design decisions as something that is, um, you know, like done by designers, and then, well, I mean, it's 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 gonna be uh, collated with the with the product managers as well. But then we have different levels of product decisions of, you know, what features do we need to um, prioritize? How are we gonna do it and whatnot? And then even up to the business decisions. And by doing this sort of like mapping, we do know as well, you know, like. Um, how do actually these um, decisions came to be made, right? And so um, we saw what are the contributing teams that, that are, that are um, dealing with all these questions at a regular basis, and then we integrate ourselves within that. And it looks simple here, but it definitely is not. Um, this is something that we're trying to do even at, um, until this point of time, is that we want to make sure that we can um, put in ourselves in the decisions of um, both design product and business and then integrate ourselves as well in the teams that are sort of like providing the information for these decisions to be made. And so um, what are the challenges on that as well is that as a traditional um, sort of like research uh, practice, we do have limitations in our data source in the way that we frame our um, findings and the way that we frame our um, study. And you know, like, what are the tools that we are coming up with? Um, it might be very much different with what the data team has come has gone. And then there are definitely a, a, a language barrier for us to actually be um, integrating ourselves within um, these different teams. And so, um, what we need to do, and what we're trying to say to ourselves as the researchers as well, is that there's no single way for us to answer questions about UX um, or questions about how users interact with our product or even questions about you know like what market we sort of need to answer but what I um, what we as a team these 50 people I and mean, like agreed on ourselves is that we need to learn on ourselves we need to understood that um, method is not something that we own but it's something that is that should be neutral we do need um, some expertise to begin with but we do know uh, we do need to know as well is that um, 
people don't see decisions from what methods it um, it, you know, like we're we're using for for the for the information finding, but it only depends on the on the on the answer. And so becoming method neutral is something that we're trying to um, push more and more. And, um, oops, sorry. Yeah, one of the case study that we're uh, that we came up with is that um, if we think about a user journey, we do know that you know, like um, there are different. Um, aspects or different variables that, that that came out like this, right? You know, like how people feel about things, how our user um, see the different stages of using our products and whatnot, and um, you know, like what are they thinking, feeling, and doing and whatnot, and you know, like what are the um, peak and uh, valley points of this experience for us to be able to visualize what are the things that need to be improved within our products. Um, but what we try to do internally as well is that. We sort of like wanted to know what are the data that actually um, reflects the faces or the the hassles that users um, feel when they're using our product, right? We do know uh, through our interviews that there are ups and downs within our um, product when it's being experienced. But then, what are the things? Are what are the sort of like evidence that we can use for us to prioritize? Which are the, which are the things that need to be well prioritized? And so we try to capture a lot of things within this um, you know, like different side of journey. What are the user funnel look like? And then um, do we have some customer support data to to um, give background to um, the issues that the, that people are having on the on the on the later part? We have reviews, we have um, satisfaction um, scores and whatnot, and then we even look at the social media listening um, data. And then the whole idea for this is we want us to be able to prioritize which issues are we um, you know, like trying to think and which solutions do we need to come up first. And um, by doing all these data, um, data-driven sort of like user journey, we we are able to sort of like prioritize with the design team, with the PMs and um, the business team as well about the magnitude of some issues, and then seeing that there's actual evidence of something is happening and needs to be optimized, and then well, it provides a new hypothesis for UX uh, for for us doing more user research as well. And the third one, the third challenge that we're seeing within our development is that. Change, um, moving or you know, transforming from a 10-person ten, a ten team into a 50-plus um, department is not easy, and you know, like people might get feel left behind. And you know, like if we don't communicate the change, um, there are a lot of costs that we need to face in terms of like um, feeding people and then challenging people onto new um, sort of like ter um, territories, and then ensuring that they can actually excel doing that. And so, um, well, within this. Um, set of, let's say, researchers that we have right now, um, we do know that um, a lot of people came from, let's say, different backgrounds. There are survey scientists that um, are fully trained as a, as a, statistic, a statistician. There are design researchers, you know, like people starting from anthropology or psychology or whatnot. And then, well, I mean, qualitative researchers from um, um, uh, computer science, even data, data analysts that, are, that has um, very much little background in terms of like researching humans and whatnot, and we do know that um, we're very solid as a team. But then, how do we actually make sure that the cross training or cross learning between the teams are um, happening? And so, what we've we've been trying to do in the past, you know, like one and a half years, is that as we move along with the many. Um, members within our department, we want to invest in people. We want to invest in the, the members that we have because we want to nurture them to become a full-fledged researchers and then making sure that the passing of information, the passing of knowledge within our team is not, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's seamless, right? And um, what's happening is that we, we've done a lot of like internal sessions where the whole idea is that for us to first share uh, capacities, share knowledge, but also share learnings about you know, like what's been happening within the products. And so um, we're, again, not starting this by making sure that someone owning a, an expertise or whatnot, but then we, um, if, if someone has you know, like a, a, in, an interest over something, we pretty much encourage them to share it to the team as well, and then you know, like making sure that it's 
um, something that is applicable for anything that is done by the researchers in their own team. And so the first one, let's say you know, like we're doing um, a, a sharing session about how to actually use service design for X type of research or how to actually do the, uh, the quantitative research um, user journey that, were, that, that I showed you before. And then, you know, like um, the whole idea for Gojek is that we have the triangle of, um, the golden triangle of users, let's say, you know, like we don't only have the customers, but then we do have driver partners and merchants to begin with. And so there are different beasts, by the way. And then the whole idea is that how do we actually ensure that our research are catered for this different set of users? And the uh, last one is basically also doing data analytics trainings, just to make sure that you know, like we know what's the logic behind data and then how to actually um, utilize the data that we, that we have as a company for our hypothesis building and research and then making it something that is um, sort of like um, reflexive within our team as well so we can use it as a tool. And the second one is, you know, how do we also share cross-learning from what we've done um, in different teams, right? Because as we told you, um, like we're, we're, we're sort of like dividing ourselves within uh, different embedded teams. And so we're embedding, um, let's say, 10 people in, in, in the transport team. We, um, we embedded um, 12 or more in the food delivery team and payments and so on and so on. And then we can get pretty much siloed in terms of like what we can share onto what each other and then what learnings that we can have uh, that it, that is needed for other teams to you know, like not do the same mistake as well. And so uh, cross learnings are something that we are doing um, pretty much religiously, just to make sure that on a weekly basis we know what learnings that we can share to other teams, what are the mistakes that we've made, what are the hacks within research that we want people to um, learn from, or something that needs to be avoided. And so all this cross-learning is something that is more of like a culture within our um, research team, just to make sure that we are doing something not only for um, the best of ourselves within individually, but also the best for our department. And that's um, basically the three challenges and um, considerations that we tried doing within the um, past two and a half years in Gojek. And then just to summarize on what's been happening is that, first of all, we tried to define what are the stories of us, what are the values that we need to bring within the um, company and then how do we actually communicate it. And the, the learnings that we have is that we started off a very explicitly UX research team and then we wanted to have more impact. We wanted to make sure that we're indispensable and then um, integrated within the decision makings within the company. And so what we're trying to do is that we decide our value needs to um, infuse into um, saving time and then make sure, making sure that people are focusing their efforts on the right thing to do and coming up with a, both empathy and evidence to ensure that our stakeholders are understanding what are the implications of our impacts. And then the second one is that, you know, like building also bridges to um, different functions. The easiest one is the data team, but also we have um, more bridges with the, with the, with the um, business analyst team, with, with the market research team. And the idea behind that is that we want to learn as much as them. We want to learn the methods of not only doing primary research, but also data analysis. We want to also learn about how um, you know, like people on a, on a basic way code and then come to fruition when it comes to, uh, um, when it comes to you know, like our coding or interaction and whatnot. And so the principle behind that is that we want everyone to be method neutral and then they learn about something that might be um, they, they've already come as an expertise, but then you know, like using other tools to learn and making sure that we're neutral in terms of like doing our research. And the third one is, well, planning and communicating our transformation. If we do have a roadmap and we, if we do have a thinking of you know, like how do we going to um, evolve as, as a team, making sure that people are thought um, you know, like thought over and then you know, like we, we know what are the implications within our members, within the implications within our communication to the, to the bigger company. Um, making sure that the change management is thought over as well. Um, it's something that we're trying to do in the first place and internally what we, what we did was that we're investing in the people in itself because we don't want to you know, like have big turnovers and not investing in people and um, seeing people as um, you know, like 
UX researchers or team members as indispensable, but we do um, all the investments of like we share the cross learnings, we share the capacities, we 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 ensure that people are um, sort of like trained to become more full-fledged researchers, and make sure that we are one as a team and we we get stronger each and every day, um, and having the same impact across the different products that we're serving right now, and that is. Basically, it. Um, thanks very much. Thank you for your time. So, thank you very much, Sakti. Thank um, you. Uh, if you haven't already put in your questions, you can go to menti.com, uh, 154227. Um, I see that there are already quite a number of questions. Oh, I didn't expect. So yeah, people discovered it. Uh, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick some of the the top voted questions that we have. Um, and uh, and ask Sakti. So the the first one that was uh, upvoted a lot was uh, how do you define UX researcher and design researcher, and what are the key differences, if any, between the two? Hmm. All right. So not this one. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a there's a sort of like easy way to distinguish between the two. But um, what we did um, try to sell within our within our research team as well is that for UX research um, to become more focused and impactful within the companies that we're going to focus more on design tractions. We we're, we're going to focusing more on sort of like um, ensuring the, 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 the flow of the design as, as tested within the users and whatnot. And so it, um, we, we, we deal a lot with um, designers, both interaction designers and product designers, just to make sure that the designs, um, the interactions, the flows are something that has been tested with the, with the, with, with the users. And we have you know, like a very good way of sanity checking everything just to make sure that we're not shipping something that is actually not making sense. And so that's for UX research. But for sort of like design research, we're trying to pull that up, sort of like thinking more in a holistic view and then using all the jargons about um, strategy, uh, design, design as a strategy, or sort of like you know, like service design, and we're thinking about how we actually um, make interactions with our um, uh, user or consumers. Because we're, if we're thinking about design, design research, we're thinking more about the offline and online um, experience as well. And so, making sure that, that it's a seamless um, uh, sort of like steps from zero to finish. Uh, for the users is something that is on the capacities of a design researcher. We don't actually have a design researcher per se within the company, but we do see design research as a capacity that we want to um, own as a, as, a, as a collective within the research team. And so that's how we we're doing it. Okay, okay, thank you. So I see that everyone has been furiously uh, upvoting questions, which is good. All right. Um, let's have a look at the next top voted question. Ah, okay. How do we convince your leaders that user research saves the company's time when is there an understanding that it actually takes time? Yes. <laughs> That's, um, actually, I don't know. <laughs> um, yes, um, I think the question about impact is something that is not really right to be answered by researchers because we cannot you know, connect ourselves to, let's say, company impacts of bringing in money, bringing in users, or let's say you know, like coming up with a revenue. It's very hard. Uh, 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 is, a, is a very hard question to answer or to solve because, well, um, we're not very much direct with it, right? And then what we did is that we're trying to see um, ourselves in two ways. So as a researcher, we come up with you know like project uh, project results or research results, and we can see that as a product, right? Um, we're thinking that you know, like all the research repository, all the let's say foundational research that we've done for our products is something that we own as a as our own baby, and so by seeing that as a metric as well, you know, like sh seeing um, let's say you know, like setting up the goals of how many metrics that we, um, um, how many sort of like foundational research that we can come up in a in a in a quarter or in a um, in a half year's time is something that we hold on as a metric, and. Definitely, we don't know if it actually saves some or not, but then we can also show what are the things that um, are not happening if research is not integrated with the product development making. And so um, by giving examples of the things that can go wrong, 
if research is not involved, if research is you know not thoroughly integrated um, across the um, product development pipeline, is something that we're trying also to do, not to point fingers, but to make sure that you know, like these are the distinctions between when research is integrated and not integrated, and then we also take pride in um, us measuring how research members are utilized and what does it take, how many hours even, for us to be able to come up with a research results and then provide it to the, to the, uh, to the stakeholders. And so that's, that's, the, that's the main thing. And then also we, we, we measure the, um, the satisfaction of, of, our, of our stakeholders, not in a regular um, sort of like basis, but we do see that as a, as a metric that we, we are keen to improve as well. You know, we're collaborating with um, product managers designers, we're collaborating with um, even engineers as well, and then we do want to know how satisfied are them in terms of like using our quote-unquote service, but you know, collaborating with us so that we know how to um, improve as a team as well. Okay, and I guess uh, one final question. I know we have a lot, but you know, we have a very Good. full <laughs> agenda to get to. So, so the, um, a lot of your presentation talked about scaling, you know, given that it's, it's a unicorn company. And you know, just for um, research itself, you know, you're going from 10 people to 50. Like 50 is probably the size of um, you know, some mid-sized startups these days. Uh, so the, the question was about the process of going from 10 to 50, and also how did you actually convince stakeholders you know, for you to keep uh, growing your team? <coughs> Yeah, I guess uh, the decision um, on you know, like coming up with this many researchers is that it started off from the fact that we're trying to embed ourselves within our product teams, and you know like we would want to build knowledge um, over time about you know, like what do we know about mobility, what do we know about food delivery and payments and so on, and we cannot really do that with you know like having ten people, right? And then so the decision for us to actually embed ourselves within the team is something that is actually a starting point for us to scale in terms of number, but also scale in terms of like expertise, because by embedding ourselves, we do need to know that every um, uh, research team that are embedded in products has the same or at least in like similar capacity in terms of like what we contribute to the products, right? And then um, let's say we don't have any um, right calculation, but let's say you know, like a minimum of researchers that are needed in a product is four, let's say. And seeing that we have 20 plus products, it doesn't, it, it kind of makes sense for us to actually evolve onto a 50 plus researchers, but then it also um, started off with the understanding is uh, from um, sort of like, you know, like we had different expertise and we don't have um, that many full-fledged researchers within Indonesia as a market, let's say, or you know, like even the Southeast Asia perhaps, as a full-fledged researcher that can be doing all the different things of data analysis, survey, qualitative, design strategy and whatnot at the same time. And so we tried to divide it into you know, like different um, key expertise sets and then having some experts on that area but making sure that we share it across the teams is something that's needed. And so that's the reason for the number as well. Okay, thank you, thank you, very insightful. Um, so a round of applause uh, for Sakti and uh, we'd just like to present a token of appreciation uh, to Sakti for speaking today. Ooh, all right, fancy. Thank you. Thank you, Sakti.